All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kind Mind Community. And uh, for those of you who have not met me, my name is Kelly Mabel, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm always happy to engage with some new people, new friends from around the world. And as we were just texting uh, in the chat, these locations, just it's just amazing to me how the world can come together and how uh, we can all be in this conversation, in this understanding and share of some of the love um, and thinking thoughts and beautiful feelings that Sydney Banks put forward so many years ago for us. And so today is not gonna be unlike any of the others, which is, uh, other than we're double dipping this week, and so I appreciate some of my regulars being here twice in a week. Um, but we're double dipping in the sense that, number one, we've got two speakers in the room, and that we'll be speaking in um, two different languages at times because there'll be words that uh, that the, the gentleman here will be sharing um, for uh, both of us, English and Swedish folk in the room. And also that um, we get the 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 double dip of this understanding this week where we're going to just see a little bit more and see it from a different perspective because culture is another place where people um, uh, have influence where we have beliefs where we've grown up with different understandings and so having a, a completely different culture uh, come to the room and share with the way they see this understanding is just um, uh, it, well, it's just brilliant and I'm, I'm happy to host. So I'm still letting people in the room, <laughs> just so you know, and probably will be doing so as we begin. But the story for me started when I met some beautiful people from what I call the faraway land. Um, most of my friends here think uh, where I went, which was to, um, to visit Norway initially, to visit and have a beautiful retreat in Norway um, on a small little island. And at the time, it was being held by Natasha Swedloff and Michael Neal and also Dick and Bettinger. And when that got cancelled, um, some of the friends that I had been connecting with in the room invited me to come for a visit anyway, for a visit to see Scandinavia and um, at that time, Denmark and Copenhagen, and with the opportunities to possibly go to Sweden. And so when that happened, I was, uh, of course, staying in my hostess room, uh, home. And at that time, my dear friend, Philip Friesing, who uh, I've been with and talking with, along with another friend, Cecilia Hector, had been sharing to me these two guys, these two gentlemen, and the learnings that they had taken from Dennis Westerberg and Thomas Lindell. And of course, I was like, who the heck are these guys? I don't know these guys. Who are they? And so we got into some conversation about that and some of their trainings and some of the ways that they found three principles and how they came to the, the message of Sydney Banks and how they spread that message and um, were uh, basically, um, I'm not going to say um, occupying and conquering Sweden, but definitely were a, a full hold on the, the, the Swedish communities and they were spreading such a beautiful feeling. And so what happened was very auspicious. We woke up one morning and we were headed out to see a little bit more of Denmark. And I saw a book that had arrived and my hostess said it came from Philip. And I said, oh, that's beautiful because my hostess, uh, Pernell Olson, didn't know Philip until she met me. And Philip and her got chatting and he said, would you like to have the book that I was able to be a writer in while I partaked in Dennis and Thomas's um, practica, practical classes. And she said, yes. And so the book arrived while I was there. Well, I was like, who the heck are these guys? And I picked up the book and I was like, well, of course I don't read Swedish, but there was a feeling, a feeling about that gift. I considered it a gift of love. And so I picked up the book and I just held it in my hand and I scoped through a little bit and I saw some of the participants' names and um, I, I learned a little bit more about this book. And I learned a little bit more about these two men. And literally that day, I didn't hesitate. I put the book down and while um, my hostess was getting ready, I sat down and I texted them both. <laughs> and I looked up their names to spell them properly and I sent them both uh, a messenger to say, who are you guys? And I want to get to know you and I would love you to come to my room. And so thus began this conversation. 
And not so long ago, I had the opportunity to sit in communication with both of these gentlemen, and I felt that beautiful feeling. I felt the message of the principles through them and so many gifts. The books, um, I'm gonna, I had to write this down because there were so many. I believe Dennis has uh, seven books, and I also know Thomas and Dennis have four audiobooks, and I know Thomas himself has four books as well. So spreading the message in a loving way, um, I don't want to spend any more time sharing with you the, the feeling that I've got for them. I'd like them to tell you themselves. So without further ado, my dear friends, Dennis and Thomas, I welcome you to the Kind Mind Room and to my friends here in Canada and all of your friends. And I, I uh, would love to begin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. My name is Dennis Westerberg, and uh, this is uh, Thomas, my dear friend and colleague. So uh, I'll start. I, I would like to start with a personal and very special hi to uh, Cecilia Hector, uh, a dear friend of me and Thomas. Cecilia Hector, thank you. I listened to you to your speech. Uh, here in um, Kind Mind Academy. And I would like to thank you for all the hope that you're spreading and love to the world. So haven't you heard about Cecilia before? So listen to, to her words and uh, contact her because she's so lovely and her story, a true story from hopeless to hope is it's so worth sharing to the world. And then I would like to reach out and say hi to a very special uh, lady in the room. I can't see her now. Her name is Ilva, Ilva Nord. No, she left. <laughs> yeah, there is Ilva. Hi, Ilva. Uh, long time ago, we met just once, but you're in my heart and I would like to thank you for all the important work that you do. I follow you, you know, like a stalker. So. Um, now I, I see you in this room, so I would like to, to uh, say a special hi to you. So my name is Dennis and I'm 51 years old. I have suffered from a mental illness for almost 30 years. In 2006, I tried to commit suicide by jumping in front, uh, in front of a moving train in the south of Sweden, a little village where I lived. But I was rescued by a psychiatrist, uh, actually. It's a long story, but after that incident, I uh, desperately searched for well-being and peace of mind. And I tried, you know, psychoanalysis and CBT and NLP and mental training and personal development. But it... I couldn't find peace of mind and happiness and well-being at all, actually. So I continued searching. And in the year of 2009, I stumbled upon a video clip on the internet. There was a guy, I haven't found the clip since, but there was a guy who looked into the camera and he said, you have... bought into the wrong model of the world. That was his words. You have bought into the wrong model of the, the world. And I was interested. And he said, after that, some magical words for me, that doesn't mean anything for most of people, but for me, it changed my life. He said, the past doesn't exist. It's just a thought in the present moment. And all my anxiety that I have carried inside of me for over 30 years disappeared like that. Because I discovered that the past didn't actually exist and hadn't done that for many, many years. Because I was a prisoner of the past, but then I found that there was no past at all to be a prisoner in. 
So I would like to speak a couple of minutes about the now, the moment that we call the present moment, the magical moment. Another word for the now is love, stillness, peace of mind, the life force within, allness, oneness, the divine. There's only one moment, and it's this moment. So pay attention to this moment. It's always this moment. The experiences that we have in life, they comes and goes. The thoughts that we have, they appears and disappears. But the moment is always the same. So pay attention to the present moment. There's no start of the present moment. There's no ending of the present moment. It's always now. And that actually means there's no future at all. There's no future at all. But don't listen to my words. Check for yourself. I try to guide you the best way I can. So let's start with Christmas Eve. Can you experience Christmas Eve now? I reframe the question for the slow learners in the room. Is it actually next Christmas, Christmas Eve now in this moment? No. Can you experience next month, next year, next week, tomorrow? There's no tomorrow. It's always today. It's always now. The only way to experience the future is to think about it, but, but it's not the future that you actually experience when you think about it. The only thing that you actually experience when you think about the future is your own thinking. And the only thing that the own, think, own thinking is, it's a thought, nothing but a thought, actually nothing at all. That looks like the future when you think it, because you can see next Christmas, you can hear it, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can feel it, but you can't, actually. The only thing that you actually see, hear, taste, smell, and feel is your own thinking. And it's only a thought, nothing but a thought, just a thought. So could we just let the thoughts of the future be for a while? in this lab because it's okay to think about the future it's okay you know i'm not the police of thinking or the thought police but we let the thoughts be the same is actually true about the past there's no past but don't take my word for it let's check it out together so let's start with last christmas can you actually experience last Christmas now? And I can reframe the question for the slow learners in the room. Is it last Christmas now? No. Or last month or last week or yesterday? There's no past. The only way to actually experience the past is to think about it, but be aware. It's not the past you experience when you think about it. The only thing you actually experience is your own thinking. And the only thing that that is, is a thought. Nothing but a thought. Nothing at all. That looks real when you think about it because you can see the past. You can hear it. You can smell it. You can taste it. But you actually cannot. So we let the past be. It's a dream. It's a thought. It's nothing. And we let the future be. And pay attention to what's left. And we let all thoughts that you have about Dennis be. Because you may think, that's a cool guy. Or you may think, that's not a cool guy. <laughs> or you may think, I go for a falafel tonight. <laughs> of course, I love falafel. <laughs> And it seems to have something to do with me because, but it's just a thought, nothing but a thought. We let every thought be and pay attention to what, what's left. 
and now. Try to leave the now. Leave the now. Do everything you can to leave the now. But, but thought doesn't count. Thoughts don't count. Come on. Try a little bit harder. Leave the now. And this is wonderful to, to understand because in, in, the, in every library in Sweden, every library in Sweden, you can get the book how to get back to the now. Don't borrow that book. It's impossible to leave the now. And another word for the now is the present moment, but also love, peace of mind, God. But I prefer another word than mind, peace of mind, and God. I prefer the life force within. If there's no life force, there's no dance. That's nothing at all. Another word I prefer is the light that shines from the inside to the outside. There's a light there. Pay attention to the light. And I know that the intellect cannot follow what, I, what I'm talking about now, but try to follow that light from the outside to the inside to the source and stay in that source. Another word for that source is Kelly Mabel, Cecilia Hector, Emma Schwelland, Matilda, Eric Hector, Mona, Anneli, Annette, Gonilla, Philip, Sid, Jesus, Buddha, and now my dear friend, Mr. Thomas Lyle. Hi, Thomas. Hello, Danny. I want to stay in this silence a little bit, in this stillness. I think it was beautiful what you were talking about, Dennis, and I really would like to feel the connection of everybody here and now. So let's, just like Dennis said, let's put everything away and just feel the life force that we all share just for the moment. There are really no words needed, is there? Because we're all the same. We are love. But since Kelly have some questions about us and where we come from and stuff, I guess I, I will share a little bit about my story. I have had extremely low self-esteem at the end of my teens. I started losing my hair when I was 17, 18 years old, and it bothered me tremendously. I felt like I wasn't good enough for anything, really. But I moved to... <clears throat> Los Angeles when I was 23. And you may think that, well, anyways, for a lot of people in Scandinavia, being able to move to LA, Hollywood, I mean, people could kill for getting that opportunity. And uh, I was excited, but I wasn't happy. 
I didn't have any peace of mind because I felt less of myself because of the way I look. So I had to do something about it. And what do you do in the land of opportunities when you're bald? You get a wig. Ta-da! Everything's solved. So I got a wig, and all of a sudden, I could feel my self-esteem come back. I felt good. I looked like a 23-year-old again, and not a 40-year-old man. You know, that's the way you look at when you're 23, 40 years old, you're an old man. Now it's just a young kid to me. But I had that for 15 years. I was almost 40 years old when I removed that rug on the top of my head. And an amazing thing happened. Because I woke up one day and I just had a new thought that, hmm, why do I need this rug on my head? I don't need that anymore. And I was really surprised because I could see myself when I got it that I was going to have that for the rest of my life. But I removed it. And all of a sudden, I felt good. So I go, okay, now my self-esteem is coming back again because I removed it. So first my self-esteem came back because I put it on. Then I got a better self-esteem when I took it off. And I said, there's something here that isn't right. Is it really the rug, the wig that is making me feel better? Is it when I take it off that makes it feel better? And I could see a pattern that there's no logic in my experiences in life. So living in the U.S. too, I mean, it's the land of personal development, mental training, classes, books, trainings. I was eating it up like popcorn, if that's the word I could use here. And everything I heard was so logical and so wise and smart. And I go, this makes perfect sense. If you think positive, your life will be positive. So that's what you're going to do. If you're going to uh, feel better, get rid of your mental blocks, your mental limits by not believing them, ridicule them, you know. But I couldn't get it to work. I went to class after class after class, and every time I got back i remember specifically i went to tony robbins unleash the power within we went on you know what do you call it um uh oh shit my english is getting so bad excuse my french um the um we went on fire we were walking on coal you know and um i never been so inspired in my life i was there for two or three days and I was just like, now I've got it. I've never felt so inspired. I got back home and I never felt better in my life for two weeks. And then everything came back to me and my self-esteem was gone. And I just go, I am sure that the other 3,999 people feel great and have found the the happiness in their life. I'm the only one that didn't get it, you know, that it, it couldn't stick with me, but I'm sure it stuck with everybody else. So I was just like, okay, I just don't have what it takes to be happy and successful in the long term. You know, I'm just one of those broken people who have been reprogrammed and reprogrammed and reprogrammed, but there's something missing up here because the reprogramming doesn't stay. It disappears again. So I started a podcast um, a couple of years before me and Dennis started one. And um, we had this, uh, a cup of inspiration was the podcast name. And we had gurus from, from Sweden that we interviewed 
on what does it take to be successful and happy? What does it really take? And everybody said basically the same thing that I've heard in the US, but they said it in their own words until we got uh, a guest called Anders Haglund in there. And he said something completely differently, completely different. And I just heard something. I, didn't, I don't know to this day what I heard, but there was something there that was true, that was real. And I contacted him afterwards. I said, do you have any books? Do you have anything? I, I, there's something here I want to I want to find out more. So he recommended Sid's book, you know, The Enlightened Gardener and Jack Pransky's books, you know, um, somebody should have told us. And I read those books and I go, here it is. There's something here. But Anders told me to go to uh, Dr. Aaron Turner in London for a four day intensive coaching. And I did. And I was worried when I got there, what if I don't get it? What if I don't get it? But day three, after I've been out for a run in Green Park, I was standing in the escalator down to the tube when I got this incredible insight that I am perfect just the way I am. There's nothing wrong with me. There has never been anything wrong with me. I have everything I need to go through life in happiness and success. Well, what is success? To me, it's just peace of mind and, and, and well-being. And at that moment, I knew that this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I'm gonna point people in this direction so more people can realize that there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with anybody. So for a year, I travel all over the world to learn and, and get more of this. I had the opportunity to go to Salt Spring Island uh, to the school with uh, Elsie and Chip. And uh, uh, when I was there, there was uh, George and Linda Prensky were there as well. So it was just a, a smorgasbord of incredible people with incredible messages. And I also got the opportunity to spend a day with Elsie two days before the event started because I got there two days earlier. So I was so excited about talking about the three principles with Elsie. And I spent the whole day with her. We didn't talk about the three principles at all. We were just hanging together. And I remember the first sentence she gave, said to me, we met at a, at a coffee shop for breakfast. And we ordered some coffee. And she was just sitting there looking at me, smiling. She took a sip of the coffee and she goes, as it is. And then for the rest of the day, we were just hanging, enjoying life. We went to a goat cheese factory and, and had to, bought some goat cheese went to her to her backyard and we're sitting there with tea marmalade and, and, and crackers and having the goat cheese. And, and it was just amazing. So I think I got more out of the three principles that day without even talking about them. So to me, to realize that I was perfect just the way I was, from having to go over 30 years and thinking I was something, I was broke. There was something broken with me. It was incredible. And I realized too that there are so many people out there that believe they're broken and they're perfect just the way they are. Just because they believe in the illusion that you're not good enough. You need to be like everybody else. You don't have enough money. You don't have the right house. You don't live in the right place. We can always find reasons why we're not good enough and why people, other people are better than us. To realize that nobody is better than you mentally and nobody is worse than you mentally. 
we're all the same. And that we are traveling on this little boat on the river of life. And sometimes we don't like where that boat is stopping. So we wanna row it back upstream and we fight and we struggle and we fight and we struggle. And finally we give up and the boat continues down the stream and we end up in another place. And in every place we learn something new. And finally, if we don't, if we stop struggling, we just explore this incredible life with all the different feelings that we can get from happiness to sadness, to sorrow, to mourning, to hate, to everything, to love, to disappointment, to excitement again, just like little children. They go from experience to experience to experience, but they don't care what the experience is, right? They can be happy in one second, they can be sad in the next second, and they can be really upset in the next, but they don't care what the last experience was, and they don't care what the next experience might be. And they don't go into, why did I experience this? There must be something wrong with me. No, they just, enjoy the experience and they don't care what it is. So once we can realize that there's nothing wrong with the experience, no matter what it is, it's just an experience. And we are here to experience all different kinds of experiences and feelings, even if they feel differently. We always experience, we always judge the experience as good or bad, but it just is. And whatever it is, there's nothing wrong with it. It's completely normal. So when we stop chasing constant well being, we can enjoy any experience, really and realizing that it's okay to have days when it doesn't feel okay, because that's just the way it is to be a human being. And that's all I got to say about that. For now. I like that. <laughs> I like the close of that. Um, I'm just going to help myself for a minute. My internet has been so sketchy that I've, you know, it's gone in and out and in and out. So your pause was like, is he there? <laughs> so I had to second guess myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I realized I well, all I, well, I got, I got on my. I'm sorry. You got which? Tell me, say, say what you're. No, I was just saying that I, I, I got it on mine that mine is unstable, so it might have been problem on my end. So, well, just to make sure I wasn't kicked out of the room and we all didn't have to do a big jump somewhere else, I passed a co-host to my dear friend Greg. So thank you, Greg. Um, coming back to the now, coming back to the now, the beautiful thing about sharing our experiences is that, um, everyone will see it differently. Everyone will hear the, the message of these two beautiful souls in a different way. And what I was hearing was, you know, so much of my thought can be outside of the now, as Dennis was pointing to, and in a state of thinking that I could be something, or I need to be something, or I have to do something, or there's something else. And, and that's how I was hearing that. That's how I was hearing the experience and realizing that uh, both of you are pointing in such a beautiful, you know, 
same, same direction. But uh, enough about what I hear and see. I, I get a full-time education in these rooms, which is really great, but I'd love to hear what anybody else has heard. So let me just turn on to gallery view. And um, Dennis, do you want to add something before, um, as Thomas was closing there? Or do you want to just go, what, what do you guys feel like you'd like to do? Let's, let's I, uh, I would say some things about, let's, let's put it this way. Some things in life, you can either learn or just be. There's one kind of stillness that you can learn. And there's another kind of stillness that is already present. There's one kind of charisma that you actually can learn. You know, the actor's kind of charisma. I've learned it. Mm. I've collected it, this charisma. But there's another kind of charisma that's already present. There's one kind of timing that you can learn. There's another kind of time that's already there. There's one kind of self-esteem that Thomas was speaking about that he could learn or gather, collect. There's another kind of self-esteem that's already present. There's one kind of courage that you can learn. There's another kind that you can experience. It's already there. There's one kind of gratefulness that you can learn to share to the world. Well, but there's another kind of gratefulness, thankfulness that's always present. There's one kind of creativity that you can actually learn as a writer. What kind of pen do you have when you write your books? What kind of camera do you have when you take your pictures? But there's another kind of creativity that's already present. You know, it's the same source that all Bob Dylan's songs are written from. It's the same source that Bruce Springsteen's songs come from but also the same source that Madonna's songs come from and my songs come from, or yours. There's one kind of empathy that can be learned, but there's another kind of empathy that's already there. There's one kind of love that you actually can learn. Learn to love the animals. Learn to love the environment. You can teach other people to, to learn to love. But there's another kind of love that's already there. Now, in this moment. And if you are a good learn, learner, you can come close <laughs> to be loving and cre creative and humble. So you can do that, but you can also let go of all ambition, all mental ambition, and just be. And I listened to a colleague of mine the great Michael Neal, who said that he, he never gives advices. And I thought, oh, cool. I never give advices either. But then he said, every people in the world who meet me want to have my advice. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could recognize that too. <laughs> so he said, so I thought about that and I think I'll, I'll actually give three pieces of advice. So he said, the first advice I would, would like to give to the world is show up. So that's my advice too, actually, show up. Because if you want to be a parent, show up with your children. 
if you want to be a loving husband, show off with your wife or your man or whatever you have. If you want to, if you would like to go parachuting, you know, show up at the in the plane. So show up, or else you won't have a life. The second advice, piece of advice he gave was when you show up, be yourself. And what I heard was show up as the life force within. Show up as the universal mind. Show up as the universal soul. Another way to say the same thing is don't show up in your thoughts. You can, you can do that. <laughs> it's okay, but show up and be yourself. And then he gave the third piece of advice, and I just loved it. He said, show up, be yourself, and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's very risky to live the life like that, <clears throat> because it could be that gravitation has gone on semester, uh, has gone on vacation the day you need gravitation. <laughs> And balance has gone on vacation when you need it. It could be like that. So it's risky to, to live our life like that. Show up, be yourself, and see what happens. So that's what uh, came to mind when you were speaking, Thomas. Yeah, I just want to and, add... And another, th another thing, it's always a problem at your, uh, at your uh, side, Thomas. So it wasn't uh, something new. Now you didn't have any connection because it's always on your side. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, well, I didn't know. Uh, so the only thing I want to add on that is... Um, exactly what Dennis talked about and what Michael Neal talks about. Really, life is served to us on a silver platter because there's nothing for us to do, really, more than show up and be ourselves and see what happens. Because within us, we have the best guide that we can have. We can take any class. We can study for our entire lives, but we'll never get the wisdom that our life force has. So if we just realize there's always an expert within us that is ready to show us the way and guide us through life, but we only need to do one thing. We need to take a step aside and let this guide show us the way. And that's risky, just like Dennis said, but the guide is always there when we trust that the guide is there. And that's the problem of trusting that guide. So we got to get in and we're going to think right, do right, act right, feel right. But when we let go of all that, we are the best version of ourselves at all times. So that was just something I want to add to that. But you said it in, in your way, Dennis, but uh, it, it's amazing if we just let go of everything and see what comes out of our mouths and what comes out in our actions, because that's incredible. Hmm. Wonderful. I'm taking in what both of you have said and um... And I've heard those words by Michael Neal. Thanks for the repeat, the rewind, the revisit. The thing that came to me for there was, um, was for me, the courage to show up over and over mm -hmm. and over again was a learned behavior. That wasn't, that wasn't just like, yeah, I can do it because I had thinking around it. And I, I want everybody in this room to know, show up changed for me over and over and over again over the course of this year. Mm. The more I sat in and listened, 
you know, I, I got this burst of energy. Okay, let's do this. But, and if anybody knows me, they know I have that all day long. I've got lots of those. <laughs> and, and choosing the one that, that, you know, lands the, the experience, you know, that, that, that was a goal in itself. Choosing the one that was really, uh, you know, the right one. Have you ever felt that you needed to have the right answer, the right place to show up? But as I listened a little bit more and I stayed the way and just kept coming back, I did, I, my show up turned from, you know, never saying anything ever, camera off, no saying anything, to camera on, still not saying anything, <laughs> to maybe saying something with my hand up, <laughs> you know, maybe putting my hand up. And all the while, still having all the feelings inside, still having that, 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 that running dialogue, but laying it down. Because something felt more important, something rose in me that was more important. Maybe the question that I had, uh, you know, at hand, Maybe it was the feeling that I wanted to just say I was having. I don't know what it was. And then my camera went on. It's like, okay, be here in the moment. Be here. Be present. Show up and just be present. You know, gather my listening self together. And that was a whole nother. Put your pen down. Put your pen down, Kelly. Just be in the moment. And when you're not in the moment, tell the speakers in the room, man, I got lost in that. <laughs> like that was, you know, I got lost in the internet. Sorry about that. I, 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 mm. you know, I missed some of what was going on. Just own, own it. What? That I sometimes get lost in the conversation and that it's okay. And that I can come back to this moment right now mm. and be here even though 10 seconds ago, it was all my worry around the internet and not getting a great recording. You know, letting go of all that stuff and just being here. And I see that as, you know, it's, it's a slow for some and fast for others. Step-by-step hmm. -step process to seeing what this source is that we're plugging into. Maybe maybe we should uh, change the order in Michael Neal's advices. <laughs> maybe. We, we could start with, you know, be yourself. Yeah. And then the show up will come. Uh, Isn't that a great plan? Yeah. yeah. A great plan. Be, and be yourself and then let's see what happens. And I, I, I promise you, you'll show up. <laughs> well, and, and also what I what I know is true as you're pointing in that direction is, you know, first we're, um, first I'm learning, first time learning, be myself. What does that look like? Mm. You know, I, I grew up being, uh, running to the speed of life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had a mandate of, you got to get it done. You got to get out there. You got to get, da, 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 da. you know, and then, so yeah, who, who, who is the be yourself? And then finding that place of like, wow, I can slow down a little. I can see a little more. And then what did that bring? And so I love those words showing up because showing up means something different for everyone. Mm. And what we, you know, take what you like, leave behind the rest because there's the message isn't always all for us, but some of it can be very pointed in its direction to our heart. And uh, I know Sid had his own experiences with that. Sometimes he'd come across like, you don't have it. You're not grounded. <laughs> You're not telling the message the way it needs to be. And then other times, you know, that he would let that go and, you know, everybody would be back in flow. Christine Heath shares that experience around, you know, he was very clear on what he wanted people to hear. And uh, some of us, you know, myself took a little longer to hear it <laughs> could, I, could i speak to that yeah please because for for many many years i had forgotten something very important because when i was five or six years old i really knew 
from the bottom of my heart that there was something mysterious of being a human. Something formless. Something being there. But I couldn't speak to what it was. But I knew that there, uh, there was something there. I knew there was a difference between a rock and a dog. I wasn't speaking about, you know, the light from the lamp. I was speaking about the current that makes the light shine. And I knew from the bottom of my heart when I was five, six years, five, six years old, that there was something mysterious of being a human being. But my mom and my dad didn't speak. And they, they, they don't, didn't mention that. No one mentioned that. My mom and dad, they, were, they weren't religious. They were just ordinary people. And, you know, in Sweden, we aren't religious. <laughs> and if we are, we keep it to ourselves. <laughs> so no one spoke of, of that, you know, the mysterious part of being human. But my mom and dad, they put me in, we call it in Sweden, the Sunday school. It was the uh, uh, school of the church. Not because they were religious, but it was, you know, free of charge <laughs> on Sundays. <laughs> so I went there when I was five, six years old, and they spoke about Jesus and Moses. And I thought that was very interesting. But so I thought now they're going to speak to what is that mysterious thing that lives inside me? What, what is that? But they didn't even mention it. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit disappointed. And then I started school when I was seven years old. And I heard that now you're going to learn things. And I thought to myself, now they're going to tell me, what is that mysterious thing of being, you know? But no one spoke about that. We had, uh, we, we, we read the Bible in school and we spoke about philosophy and psychology and when I was 15 years old no one had ever spoken about you know just being what is that so I fell in love with science and I am in love with science even today but I got lost in science because in science you only speak of what, about what you know and nobody knows what that energy, that formlessness actually is. So they take a, a, a factor from the equation. And when you pull a factor from an equation, you can't solve it. What Sidney Banks did, in my words, he just took the factor back without telling us what it actually was. He has said, look, look within, there's something there. I, I will not tell you what it is, but the fact that it actually is make all the difference in the world. And I knew that when I was five, six years old, but I forgot it. And Sid, that wonderful man from Salt Spring Island, I read his book, The Enlightenment Gardener, just one or two years after my experience from the video clip I was talking about when a man said the past doesn't exist. And that was the second time that my life changed. Because he reminded me of something that I actually already knew. So that was what I heard. There's something living inside every living being. You don't have to be that. You already are that. So pull that life away from you. And there's no Dennis. Pull it back. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Here you are. Thomas? Would you like to add something? No, not really. Yeah, something. I just, 
I, I just feel that um, I don't know about you guys, but, but we there is this feeling in this room right now that I just feel that um, we are exactly where we need to be mm -hmm. in this moment. But I'm curious to hear about everybody else that are here and not just me and Dennis. Let's hear what the visitors have to say. Well, let's begin with the uh, chat because um, Stebe, if I have that right, says, how come, this, how come the same thoughts keep popping up all the time? Does it have something to do with the law of attraction? What part of me attracts these thoughts? Who'd like to speak to that? Yeah, yes. yeah, go ahead. It could be that there's one thinker, not several. It could be there's one thinker, not several. That the thinker is the same. There's one light, one life force, one dreamer, one dream, one reality the same reality. One light, many windows, but one light. It could be. And from that light comes the universal thought, one thought. That creates all the universe, all the future, all the past and all your personality and all this game, the theater of life, life. The divine dream it could be that there's one thinker it and it's not dennis it's before dennis you know it's not even thomas <laughs> well it certainly isn't me <laughs> <laughs> I'll, but, I'll... But who, who is that and then we got lost again we, 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 we look out of our eyes and, and wonder who is the thinker and we search <laughs> and we search and we search and then we stop searching and there it is yeah i'm going to say yeah Dan, thomas please i would like to answer the question uh like this what does it matter it's just your thoughts what does it matter what you dream at night time it's just thoughts at night and they're not real anyways. So why does it matter what thoughts to show up if we, you know, if we don't care about them because there are illusions in the moment. So because we can drive ourselves insane trying to figure out why come up, why did I have this experience? What if I had the next one and we're in this thing and we're gonna try to figure out the illusions but you can't solve one illusion with another illusion and since they're all illusions anyways who cares what shows up that's just another perspective to look at it and stevie i'm just gonna say that you know um it's not mentioned in your question but if the thoughts you're having are thoughts that uh, are unwanted and they keep coming back um my my understanding is that um, I just lost my train of thought. That's what's going on. I just lost my train of thought. Um, just let me get back to it just for a sec. Um, I've had ruminating thoughts of the same kind. And uh, what I see is that, oh, I know what it is, that um, generally it's in a chaotic place where I'm not at peace or I'm not feeling calm where i'm creating as thomas was saying one thought and another thought and 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 they keep coming back and they have the same volition they have the same power and sometimes they seem like they get more powerful but what i realize is that um as dennis was saying there's really only one thinker and all the rest is illusions and so when i get calm and i slow down a little bit then I can get quiet and that source will come 
with a different thought. Thomas. Yes, another way, another metaphor that I would like to speak about is like thoughts are like bullies. You know, they wake up in the morning. Who should we screw with today? Oh, let's go to Thomas because he always takes us so seriously. And then they bring all their thought friends with them. And then they sit up, you know, in the galley and just laugh at me when I go, you know, get stressed out and afraid and blah, blah, blah. But the, here's the thing. Thoughts are like people, you know, they only want to hang with those that believes them and respects them. Once you don't believe anybody, you know, if, if they if you don't believe they don't want to hang with you, they go with somebody else that wants to believe them and trust them. So once you stop trusting your thinking, they don't think it's as much fun to come back and screw with you. That's just metaphorically speaking, but that, you know, if you don't take them so seriously, they don't think it's so much fun to come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. I hope that helped. I see that you, you, you had to, did you want to come and say anything or you're more than welcome to turn on your mic? Please do so if you feel free. The room is open for everybody. Goodmunder says that, Thomas, that metaphor was absolutely spot on. Thank you. <laughs> it has helped me a lot, you know, and I usually talk to people can relate to that. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, you know, we have, we have known each other for many years and so many times you say so, so many great things, but you cannot hear them yourself. So here comes another one that I actually, uh, uh, I took, took a note now. So listen to this, this came from you, but it ca didn't came from you actually, it came from the source. I, right, I'm sure right. yeah, because that. I'm not smart enough to have no. that brilliant thinking. No, I know. You, you ask Thomas, I know Thomas, he's no, <laughs> he's, he's nothing actually. He's nothing, he's just an illusion. <laughs> yeah. So speaking about illusion, this was, what you said listen to this guys you can't solve one illusion with another one you can't solve one illusion with another one what will happen when you let every illusion go because there's a problem with an illusion we don't we, we actually don't understand what an illusion is we think that illusion means nothing but the illusion has two ingredients. One is an illusion is nothing. But the second one is, help me out, Thomas. It, it seems, seems to be like, seems to be. seems to be. So both things is true. And it's the same thing about God and God's son, about man and who man really is about formless and form. One, one is an illusion and one is the reality, but the illusion means it isn't, but it seems to be. So if we can, can be, if we just can accept that, that all life is an illusion and it has always been, Another word for illusion is reality. There's one reality. It's not many reality, it's one reality. But, we, but when we get close and, and try to examine the reality, we will discover that it, is, it isn't what it seems to be. And we can do that with science, but we can also do that with an inner experience, because the inner world and the outer world is the same world. So you can use science to experience the world. And, and if you have a, a, a big enough, uh, magnifying glass, magnifying glass. If you have a big enough magnifying glass, you will see that actually no matter exists. It's just energy. But you can experience the same thing, but by going inside and the best the best uh, guidance that i have stumbled upon to going inside 
isn't meditation or yoga or mental training or NLP. It's three principles. The life force within, it's called mind. And consciousness, it's called the screen. <laughs> Universe. Or thought, it's called... Yeah, it's thought. Mm. So if you study those three principles, you get the same answer as the scientists, actually. So that's cool. But you cannot, listen to Thomas, you cannot solve one illusion by creating another. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have a hand up. And I'd love to uh, also get to the chat after. Sandra will be right with you. Greg, please. My Hi, guys. hometown boy. Thanks so <laughs> much. Hi. Um, earlier when you guys were talking about the past not existing, my, my first coaching experience back in, I think it was April, I was being coached and I'd been carrying something with me for like 15 years and my coach kind of talked me through the past not existing. And just like Dennis said, it was like almost instantly gone. The, the weight of that was gone. And then he started talking about forgiveness and I stopped him and I said, there's if it doesn't exist, what do you forgive? <laughs> it's, <laughs> and, and, and I was lighter still. So it's, uh, you know, realizing that about the future and the past and the, the, uh, the liberty and freedom that that brings you is just, um, indescribable. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thank sharing you. that, Greg. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So in the chat, we have Sandra Niska, um, I listen to your podcast often and I love it. I feel so much calm, but one thing, one example, I am afraid to be sick, really phobic. Don't know the English word. I think it's phobic. I can't sit in the passenger seat. I have to drive. I can't fly the airplane afraid to be sick. I have learned to let the thoughts go, but when it is a phobia, I get in panic. Sandra, if you want to come on, please feel free. I'd love to hear from you. And if not, the, the gentleman can answer all on their own. I don't see you. Where are you? Oh, I see your, I see your screen. Would you like to come and share yourself? And it's okay if you want to speak Swedish. We can translate yes. that. We, we'd love to hear that. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys want to begin sharing and she may so choose um there it's is. really dark <laughs> where i am just now <laughs> so you can i think we you feel your see. light we feel your light uh, yeah <laughs> yes um uh, so i uh, write it uh, oh, i'm so i'm not so good to speak english <laughs> please speak no your problem. own language please feel wait, wait. yeah mm -hmm. yeah Eh, nej, men alltså, jag har ju lyssnat på er podd väldigt mycket, som sagt, och jag har ju, ja, jag har ju lärt mig väldigt mycket och mår mig väldigt mycket bättre, så där. men när det kommer en sån här ren fobitanke, alltså just en sån här fobi, jag kan knappt ta hand om mina barn när de kräks, alltså, då, jag vet inte hur, hur, hur gör man för att få bort det? <laughs> mm. Tack. She basically just repeated what what is said in the chat, you know, uh, basically, and and her problem, like everybody's problem, is that there is a difference. She thinks there's Sandra. You think that there's a difference between a thought, but a phobic thought. You know, yeah, I can deal with the thoughts. That's no problem. But when it's a phobic thought, that is something different. You know, and and we all we all get these. Uh, when we coach people and, or they take our classes and stuff, they often said, yeah, I know it's my thinking, but, you know, and then it's really not realizing what a thought is, you know, it, it's like what Dennis described so well, you know, for a moment ago, it is nothing, but it seems to be everything for the person that think it in the moment. So it, it's more of an understanding that, the feeling that you get when you have anxiety or phobic feelings, phobic thoughts that gives you a, a 
an anxiety or some kind of stressful feeling. We don't want to have that feeling. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to fix it because I don't want to feel this way. So I'm trying to think something else. So that feeling will go away. Well, one way to, to describe it, and I got to let Dennis in because he's really good at this too, is that the feeling that you get is your innate mental health telling you that Sandra, up, 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 you're getting caught up in your illusions right now. Please let them go. It's not true. And that's the only way your mental health can warn you that you're out there believing something that is not true. Mm -hmm. We have the feeling in our physical body. So when we sprain an ankle, you know, that hurts, but we kind of uh, grateful and thankful for that, that, that pain because it tells us that Thomas, don't put your running shoes on because this needs to heal first. Mental health, it, it, the only way it can relate to us is by giving us feelings, feelings of worry, feelings of stress, anxiety, panic, and finally depression, you know, so it, the overheating uh, uh, warning that we have on a, on a hair blower, you know, how that shuts off when, when it's getting too hot. And that's the same thing when, you know, when you get depressed, you can't think anymore because that's the only way your mental health can really heal you. That's one way of going there, but I'm sure that my dear colleague and friend Dennis has a, a another way to explaining it to Sandra. What comes to mind when I listen to, to Sandra is that she has been listening to our podcasts for a long time. And I think that Sandra may be forget that there are three principles, not one. And the most interesting principle for many people is the principle of thought. So when you have a thought problem, you know, uh, you think about your daughter uh, vomiting, or you think about flying, you think about fear, and you think about, you, you automatically, you um, start to be interesting interested in the principle of thought but here's my advice not for 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 um, forever but for a month uh, further on sandra here's my advice don't mind the principle of thought <laughs> you, you know the principle of thought that's not a actually it's not it's, it's nothing <laughs> so so Please mind the principle of mind, because it's everything. Mm -hmm. I know that you're interested in the principle of thought. Don't be. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> but I, my advice to you is to listen to every podcast that we have recorded when we speak about mind. And in Swedish, we call it livskraft, the life force within. But but the life force within, you know, the, the God principle, the oneness, the allness, it's so. I had to flu me, Thomas. Um, I don't, don't know right now. Anyone else? Um, <laughs> flu me, fire, fire, flu me. No, no, no it's flu me so, is kind of um, too spiritual. Um, it's okay, too. Uh, yeah, it's right. yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's. Way yeah, up it's here. Too way out there, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Actually, the principle of the life force isn't something strange at all. It's it's fundamental. It's easy to understand. Are you alive? Check for yourself. Are you aware? Don't answer the question. Check for yourself and stay in the answer of yes. Are you aware? So stay with that principle. Just stay with that principle. Don't mind thought. Don't mind consciousness. <laughs> Just one principle. Stay with that principle. And why do I say this? You Because Michael Neves said, show up, be yourself, 
you know, life force and see what happens. But we change the order. <laughs> be the life force. Don't be your thinking. Be your life force, and you already are. But stay with that principle. Because actually, there is not three principles. There's one. They're all, all the same. They're none. They're just the potential for being three, but they're none. So be that none-ness. Thomas. Another way of looking at it is consciousness. To speak about all three principles here, still you're aware of being conscious, but consciousness has a very good special effects department who can make any thought really, really real. But it only works in one way. The more power you give the thinking in the moment, the harder the special effects department are working. You know, if you don't give the thought any power, you don't give the special effects department any power. So the more seriously you take your thinking in the moment, the more the special effects people are going to work. And they don't care what the content is. If you give them the power, they will make it really, really, really real. If you don't give them the power, there's not much to work with. That's just like another metaphoric way to say it. Let's check in. Sandra, does that help? Yes, it helps. <laughs> um, I'm going to quit thinking so much. <laughs> not no, <at> all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's the thing, Sandra. We're not saying that you should stop thinking because you have no power over what thinking that you You have no power whatsoever. The one thing you can do is not listen to the voice in your head so much. Don't, don't even if you hear it, don't care about it. Like you have an, an, a guy hanging on to you and telling you all the crap that you don't want to hear and it's on your case all the time and just telling you, you know, like when you're at the party and you end up at the, at the most boring table at, at, the, at the wedding, right? And next to you, you get the most boring guest there is. And that guest is just sitting in your ear and eating your ear up with his boring, you know, stories and all that stuff. In the beginning, you're very polite and you say, yes, I know, thank you. But in the end, you don't even listen anymore, even though you hear that person. So that's what we want you to do. You can't steer your, your thinking and what's coming, what's going to show up. But you, sometimes you have the power not to listen to it and don't care about whatever it's saying. And the less you care, the less power you give the special effects department to make it really real. I understand. Thank you. You're Sandra, welcome. Thank you for showing up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, for thank you Sandra. Voicing and, and being a part of the room, and it's lovely to meet you. And thank you. Thank you for showing up and listening uh, to our episodes in our podcast. It means a lot to us. Thank you, uh, uh, Sandra. No, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you. We have Goodmunder, please. Yeah, sorry for not sharing the camera. I am now allowed to speak, but I'm not allowed to put on the camera because behind me I have a very sick wife <laughs> in the bed. She might sneeze, so don't be alarmed. It will not be contagious. We take you any way you'd like to come. Thank you for showing. <laughs> so I know Dennis and Thomas. Uh, they trained me as a coach, and I remember picking up my diploma. I think it was you, Thomas, that said, "Here comes the angry man." <laughs> Do you remember it? <laughs> I will never. No, forget. no, I don't. I said that yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was just, con okay. just you know, spontaneous. Um, and anyway, but I mean, um, just to support what Sandra was saying, I, I, I think you remember you were at my company where I work, and Dennis, remember we had our brain researcher. You know, I've been, I've been struggling with putting the three principles in in my you know, world of business somehow. And I'm actually succeeding in a, in a way. And it would be nice to discuss that on another <laughs> level. 
But just, you know, to sympathize with Sandra's comment, uh, I struggled a lot. And I remember, Thomas, we were in a car together once and I asked you, you know, I was so happy because I got it. I, I get it now. And, and then I, I realized I didn't. So I asked you, when, when is this journey over? And you said, it doesn't end. And I said, fuck it. <laughs> Come on. It has to. I mean, I am, you know, I can, you know, my credentials and trainings and, you know, feathers in their hats, you can list them. And I, I, three principles were supposed to be one of them. Just like, yes, done that, got it. <laughs> you don't get it, Sandra. You never get it. And then when you stop <laughs> thinking about getting it and stop thinking about how to solve the equation, then finally, you know, like Thomas after your jogging run in London, it just something happens. Bing! And you say, oh, I finally get it. Uh -huh. But then you realize, I don't get it okay. because, you know, in a few hours, something happens and you think, shit, I, I went into the trap again. This was just my thinking. It was not reality. It was just a fantasy. And then you think, shit, I failed. I don't get it. We are humans. We are not supposed to get it. It's something above our understanding. We just, you know, like your analogy, Thomas, with the, the boat, just stop rowing against the stream. Try to, you know, I'm... I'm I'm tempted to say go with the flow, but that's not what I mean. Mm. I mean, just it's a miracle every day, and sometimes you are aware and realize it, and other times you think life is shit, and that's the way it goes. Uh, mm. Perhaps you can explain the elevator analogy, which I love personally. The elevator goes up and down; you have no way of controlling it. What a bloody elevator! <laughs> right. Somebody should fix it. Let's find the buttons. Let's press it and let's control it. Just let it go, man. You're sometimes you're in the penthouse with your dreams, and sometimes you're in the garage level. You know, just absolutely. Yeah. And let, let me please. add something here. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate this. Uh, sorry if I call you every man. I, you know, <laughs> that was just a thought in the moment. But I was very angry. But Thomas one thing. One thing I want to say. <laughs> One thing I want to say is that we're not afraid of our nightmares. You know, we can get horrible nightmares, but when we wake up, we don't care about what the dream. Well, some people do, but most of us don't. And so don't be afraid of the daydreams that we run into because they can feel as bad as nightmares do, but they're still dreams. So it's okay. To, to, to get caught up in the dream in the moment, but don't make a big deal out of it later. Oh, I don't want to have that nightmare anymore. Well, well, don't say that. If that nightmare shows up again, so be it. It's just a nightmare. It's just a dream. But, you know, during the day, the daydreams that we have, oh, no, those we want to pick and choose just the part of being, being human, but more understand of the dream part of it, the less serious you will take it. Dennis? I just want to point to the difference between being afraid and being afraid of being afraid. Mm. Being afraid is it's a daily experience. But being afraid of being afraid is a min misunderstanding of where our feelings come from. Because all feelings are human. You, you, we feel hate, we feel envy, we, we feel jealousy, we feel fear. But the only, only way to be afraid of being afraid is to misunderstand where uh, this feeling comes from. There's no feeling coming from uh, a diagnosis called uh, phobia. There's no feeling coming from your past or for, from your uh, personality or from the, uh, from the airplane or from the spider. There's only one source where all feelings come from. And it's from the life force within uh, transformed to a thought and getting life when it comes to consciousness, uh, being sent to the senses. So there's no thought, it's just the potential of thoughts. And the thought 
shows up in consciousness and being sent to the to this uh, sight, to the ears, to the mouth, to the nose, to the uh, feelings. So that's the only thing that it can happen. And now it's uh, almost half past seven. So Kelly. <laughs> Well, first, let's say, uh, Goodmunder, thank you so much for uh, sharing. Did that yes. answer some of what you were looking for? You may be gone. Yeah. No, are you asking me? Yes. Yes. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did that? Was that helpful? What they were sharing? No, not at all. No. <laughs> so, Wendy, <laughs> just the the angry, the angry angry man. man. Turn pay, me, pay me and Thomas for lunch. I'll, we we explain to you uh, <laughs> once again. No, I mean I was being ironic. I mean for me, the thing is when you stop analyzing and just go with the understanding of the three principles. That's when it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, that's how it worked for me, and I'm I'm really dreaming of being able to. Uh, having that as my profession, so to speak, that is not so easy. But uh, I, I think it's incredible how many people, as we sometimes talked about sleeping, Dennis, that so many mm. people are sleeping, really. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see so many people here tonight, at least, that, that really want to be awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. I have to say that that's what this room is for. That's why we're here. It's because you're all lamplighters. <laughs> you're all holding the lamp for others and um and that's 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 how this works is the reason thomas and dennis came to the room and we have a burning desire to share susan <laughs> sorry i don't want to detain no, you please 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 i just um want to thank you kelly and dennis and thomas what a beautiful christmas gift so thank you very much this has been so wonderful thank you Thank you. Thanks for coming. Susan's Thank a you. beautiful regular in the room here, and we're very happy to have her. Um, just saying that that uh, that you know Thomas and uh, Dennis may have gone before you, may have uh, found their way, their message, their understanding before you, but they're here, like the lamplighter, because we all have the light within, and. Mm. Uh, and we're just opening up the conversation so each one of us and wherever we go can light the light for someone else. And so this particular month was called December's Light because that's what we're doing. <laughs> so if the, all of us can shed a little more light and love on the world just by sharing who you are, by sitting in a place that is gentle and kind and just listening, just listening to somebody else. Um, that's light enough. That's light yeah. enough. So I, well, I just want to say this, uh, Kelly, I just want to say thank you so much for having this uh, opportunity, having this platform for all of us to be together. And I know um, Dennis thanked a lot of people here and I just didn't want to repeat it because there's so many more things to say, but I'm so thrilled to see so many people here that I recognize and that you uh, chose to to spend this evening away from your family to listen to us here uh, mm -hmm. that means a lot to all of us here and and uh, you are a part of this change that we're all trying to give to this world so you should all be proud of yourselves and and again uh, thank you so much kelly thank everybody and thank you dennis and thank you cecilia for letting kelly know and, and philip as well so so okay. thank you so much yeah thank it you. all begins with a little chat a little chat, exactly. a little listening, and a lot of kindness. Mm. So everyone, thank you for coming. If you'd like to turn on your microphones, I'm going to stop the recording.